Hello and welcome to the Southbound Sports Show. I'm your host, Richie Leahy, here with my co-host, Matty B. And we're in the thick of off-season. Uh, Bruce Arians today talked about Tom Brady, saying that he's hoping he considers coming back and that the door's still open. Although Tom's like, no. He's like, I, Tom hasn't even put, like, shown any interest to in coming back. I'm like, then why are you bringing it up in an interview? Like, are you that worried about your quarterback room going into the season? And then the only other NFL thing is Packers yeah. GM says that he's received no offers for Aaron Rodgers. And I'm like, number one, that has to be a lie, right? It's, it seems like, you know how you always hear, like, right before someone gets traded, they're like, so-and-so, no interest, no trades, and then the next day they're like, yeah, he's traded. We've been working on it for a while. So that makes me think that there is a possibility, I, I, but I don't know. But it could just but it could just be that they're going to demand so much for Aaron Rodgers. Like, it's not like they're going to trade him to someone for, like, a second-round pick. Like, they're, they're going to try to to get their fair share for it. But I, I don't know how much would be reasonable to ask for. So like if the teams are just like, like Pittsburgh could be like, Hey, well, what's it going to take? And they're like, Oh, three first round picks. And you're like, Oh yeah, no, I'm not screwing myself. Well, it's not even that Aaron is apparently asking for like $50 million. So if the Packers don't pay it, some other team is going to have to take that hit. Right. So I think they're going to have to give up a ton anyway, unless he works out like a sign and trade type deal. So I'm kind of 50, 50 here. I don't know if it's going to be worked out. Like I have a feeling he's going to be back in green Bay. I don't know what they do supporting cast wise, which kind of stinks going into the season. Um, But if you're banking on him being enough to get it done, then roll with it. The other quarterback story is Garoppolo had, had or is going to have a uh, shoulder surgery. So he's been one of the leading names for Pittsburgh and he's also been leading to take over for Tom Brady. So I wonder how much a surgery, cause he's not young either. Remember he played behind Tom Brady for a long time and then it took him a while to even get his own started job and then going back and forth with injuries or whatever. Uh, yeah. He, he, he can't be coming back a hundred percent healthy. So, I think he would be a good fit at Pittsburgh like if they're going to go ahead and take a run. I know you prefer more of a running quarterback type deal. But if you want a guy that has experience and just doesn't lose the game, I wonder what they could do with the way the team's built, like defense first, where before, when Ben didn't just lose the game, they seemed to be fine. Although they need a guy that, that's a little bit better winning the game. Like I think Garoppolo has shown over like a – Mason Rudolph. So you have a guy that could lose the game, could get hit in the head with the helmet, whatever, where I think Garoppolo would kind of push them up. And I wonder what that would be in contrast to Ben's like, hey, I might throw 10 interceptions today slash get hurt and be hobbled around and not have a run game because I call the offense. So uh, we'll see. But that's all I have for the my NFL roundup. You have anything? Well, I, th- I think, you know, you're saying about these potential situations. The answer could be rehabbing right now. It's Jameis. He's been running. He's throwing. He looked good last year with the Saints. He went for that uh, that route to be with Sean Payton, and now that Payton's gone, he can come to Pittsburgh. I mean, it, it's rumored there. That would I, I know a lot of people have a lot of negative, negative things to say, but – he led the league in, in passing yards and passing touchdowns. Like he, he has the arm strength to do the things that Pittsburgh wants him to do down the field. And I think with Matt Canada, if, if they truly bring him in, there's your opportunity to really build around your run game because then you can go offensive line heavy in the draft and free agency heavy on offensive linemen because of that, the, the cap hits that you're going to save from Roethlisberger's contract that you should have more than enough to be able to, to build around to win right now. Well, that's going to be the tough part for some of these teams. If you're trying to lure in a big time quarterback, are you going to be able to build around it? 
Like, I don't even know what situation would be good enough for Aaron Rodgers to just come in and take like a $50 million hit. And I know it's only going to be for a couple of years. He could also just retire. He hasn't, like, I, I know he's pretty much hinted that he's coming back, but I mean, that's not a possible, or that's not out of the realm of possibilities. But like Pittsburgh, I, I honestly would just like to see them continue taking flyers on like younger guys that have like kind of flamed out and get them for cheap. Like Haskins, didn't they only give him like a million dollars or something like that? So like, yeah. Just do that. Do that and see what happens. And maybe you could start to rehab some of these guys. But I wonder if they get a lot of veteran or like try to rebuild the locker room is what I would like to see. I mean, look at the energy Joe Burrow has brought to Cincinnati. They almost won the Super Bowl. Like get that young energy where everyone's buying in. It seemed like in the past with Ben, he's kind of been, I know it's been talked about in the media where he's like, separated from these younger guys and i guarantee that hurts the locker room but i think that was a knock on him from day one was that he was never going to be that leadership guy and that they had guys like paul amalu and harrison and heinz ward that kind of kept the glue together during their super bowl years that it was it didn't have to be roethlisberger being the leader yeah but like i mean it's for as many scandals go- as he had you have to kind of turn it into like a Tom Brady situation. I don't. I wouldn't say Tom Brady was like the leader his entire career, but late in his career, he realized like, hey, I have to show these guys how to win, and he had that type of mindset where Ben was kind of like, eh, you know, I might just take over. Who knows like what's going to happen with me? And he's like so nonchalant, like, yo, fire these guys up and be like, hey, I'm going to show you how to win because I'm getting old and I'm not going to be able to do this forever. And he never really did that. So whenever, every time the going got tough and like in the playoffs, it's like, yeah, we're going to just check right out here. It's the same issue I think Baltimore has with their roster. And that's why I kind of, not, I'm not worried like Lamar Jackson and the Ravens are going to win the Super Bowl. It's like, yeah, they don't know how to win. They don't know how to win. People said the same thing with like the Bears. Like, oh, the Packers need to be worried about the Bears. It's like, no, I have zero worry about the Bears. They don't know how to win. <laughs> They're bringing in guys that really don't know how to win in the NFL anyway. So, like, what am I worried about? You're not hiring anyone that's going to scare Packers fans, right? Same, yeah. Same with the lines. Like, all right, well, if Aaron Rodgers leaves, well, Packers are done. It's like, no, these other teams in the division really don't know how to win either. So maybe a new quarterback can kind of a younger guy just come in and you just can win the division again, which would probably piss off the other teams. Uh, the Vikings would have been the one like if they would have brought in a hardball or someone but they didn't even do that they're like yeah we're going to take a flyer on a young mind on offense because that's what the Vikings are known for innovative offense Matt the greatest show on what, turf they did, they did have a pretty innovative offense when they already had Reed and Carter and then drafted Randy Moss that was a heck of a move yeah that was decades ago I'm talking about in the past 10 years. <laughs> They've been run first, uh, half pro style, whatever quarterback they throw out there. Yes, and guess what you do with, with that kind of offense? You win. What have they won? They won the playoff. They won in the playoff. <laughs> they won a playoff contending team. Did they win this year? I can't even remember if they were in it. I don't know. Was it Thielen hurt? I forget. Yeah, Thielen was hurt. Well, everyone was hurt. Well, I know. That's a big injury thing. So we'll see what happens. Um, We'll do another check-in next week. I think March 16th is the date. Aaron Rodgers has to declare, which I think he's going to be the biggest moving part. And once he decides what he's doing, you'll see these other pieces fall into place. Because like the Broncos are heavily favored for him. If he falls through... Are they going to take a run at Garoppolo? Um, what about the Sean Watson? Is that a thing? Uh, who knows what's going to happen? There are a couple other moving pieces I think need to happen, but I think just because of his age and the MVP stuff, I think Aaron Rodgers is the first one that has to make that decision. So probably get another week or two. Maybe we'll hear some more stuff. Uh, the other main thing this week, not football related, Major League Baseball has officially began their lockout. I think they're looking at a pretty long lockout. 
Um, I've been following it. And I mean, I really don't care. The Braves will be World Series champions for just a little bit longer. They could cancel the whole year. That'd be pretty sweet, right, <laughs> Matt? Maybe they could hold another parade. That'd be awesome. But I will say that the way that Major League Baseball is kind of pushing it, it seems like they don't want to give up anything. And the Players Association is not going to take that. So they kind of are kind of bullying them by saying like, hey, we're going to cancel this if you don't just accept it. And they're like, yeah, you didn't give in to any of our terms. And I'm simplifying this, basically. But then they just keep coming back and they're like, we're going to cancel opening day. We're going to cancel opening day. Come on, just agree to it. But I mean, like, that's not going to work. But what, but in your opinion, why? Why? What was the the plan from the owners uh, to just push that to logjam that? It, it's all about the salary cap stuff right now. So uh, let me see if I can get the latest numbers. But I'm just thinking, like, in terms of like, is it an issue that if they don't start on time? That the 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 players are going to be hurt because they're not going to be able to count that as a qualifying year. Well, they're not going to get paid. So the longer the lockout goes, they don't get paid. So I think the owners are kind of thinking, well, the players are just going to give in, give in. They really have been getting. I mean, a lot of fan pushback. Fans just don't care. There's not enough balance. There's not enough parity. The salary cap is kind of ridiculous. Uh, the proposal, I was wanted to make sure I got the right numbers. I think it's $180 million at the top. But the low, like, bottom salary would have been $100 million. So what did the Pirates have? Like, if 70, 80 million? Like, they weren't even there. So they would have to pay a little bit more. But, like, come on. They're still going to have to get an $80 million gap. So, like, it just didn't make sense to me. And uh, what the players are saying is, hey, you're trying to make our high earnings lower. And I'm kind of shocked by the lower end players kind of going against this because it's really not going to affect them. In fact, they mu- more players make the league minimum than anything, basically. So by adding a bump to that lower salary from like the Pirates 70 to 80 million um, and making it 100, they're going to end up making more, I would think. But, on the other hand, who knows? Maybe the Pirates just overspend on McCutcheon then. And they're like, yo, you know what? <laughs> this guy brings it in. Forget these other clowns. We'll keep their salary low. But we'll just pay for one guy to make us hit that mark and sell jerseys, right? Because that's going to be... I mean, look how many NFL teams overpay for their quarterback or their star running back or wide receiver. I mean, they've kind of not done it for running backs for a while. Um, but that's, that's what my thing is. I'm trying to see what the uh, actual breakdown is for other sports here because I had only looked at baseball coming in. Uh, they have like the signings and stuff. Uh, let's see if we can look it up. They originally wanted it to be $210 million. Down to a hundred million, I believe, which to me is an even larger gap. But the players are kind of rallying around the stars, saying like, "Hey, if you lower it, the stars aren't going to make as much money." And I think I think you just have a lot of players that think they grew up being the man, and they're like, "Well, just wait till I get a little bit more experience. I'm going to be that type of earner. So I I need to be able to make more money whenever I have my chance." And who knows? Maybe they're right. Maybe they're right, um, but what is your thought on it? Do you think it makes a difference? I, I don't know because I just think like if if the thing that the players' association is saying is expand, like expand the payroll, all all that's going to do, I think, is just take those those top tier guys, and instead of making the two hundred and fifty million, they're going to make. 300 million like they're just going to pay that top guy that much more and it's not going to it's not going to help a lot of the guys at the at the lower at the lower levels i mean to me where i think there needs to be some balance is if they're going to have this elaborate farm system i think the lower level farm system needs to be compensated because you have guys that are like posting about getting like a shitty ham and cheese sandwich is like being part of a minor league affiliated program. I think like if you're going to treat 
those those lower levels that way you need to at least treat it as a minor uh, moderate professional and that's where i'm looking at this where yeah you have those lowers i don't even think it's going to matter to that because it's only looking at they're basically saying that they want teams to spend more um the nfl i brought theirs up so like right now it's like 200 million and they have to be within a a certain amount of that. It looks like twenty five million. Otherwise, they pay a penalty. Um, some teams like the the Saints are so high over going into this season that I don't know what the hell they're going to have to do to get under that. But Miami's super low right now. Uh, but like for example, let's go back a year. Uh, to or why is this out of order now? So like it looks like it, they're around thirty million. Basically, between the higher and the lower team, you have like 172 for the Seahawks last year to 205 for Dallas. So maybe like 30 million. Where and Major League Baseball saying, "Hey, we're going to start ours." They were going to do 110 million difference, but then they're like, "Well, let's kind of go ahead." And um, I wonder how many teams pay the penalty or whatever. And plus, don't they get a little weird with like the franchise tag and stuff too? So that gives them a little bit of leeway. I don't know. I haven't heard what Major League Baseball is planning on doing there. Like in terms of signing veteran guys and keeping them under, or like not counting part of the salary or whatever they agree to. Um, but just looking down through this, it seems like it's pretty similar in that regard. Where hey, let's look and like think of how shitty teams are in the NFL, right? So let me just go back and read lowest salary t- cap teams, Matt. The Jets, the Chiefs, of course, which the t- Chiefs are young. That's 2019. Then the Colts. The Jets, the Browns, the Giants, the Jets, the Redskins, the Redskins. All pretty much losers, right? For the most part, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean they're, they're losing, but like I think when you look at Washington, they've been a team that they're the anti-Pittsburgh. Where like Pittsburgh is like, I'll give you a dollar. The Washington's like, I will give you $700 billion to whoever the top free agents are, and then they still get their butt kicked every week. Well, see, that's what my fear is, like having them on this list, and it's going back to 2013. That's what I'm worried about with like the Pirates. They tell them, hey, you have to hit this low minimum. Like the Reds, because they're like, yo, you guys got to be semi-close. And it's crazy, Matt. For, so from 2013, the high team was $130 million salary. The Saints right now have 250. That's like 100 million more just in salary in like a decade. And I know they have to bring it down because the maximum's 208. But that's still a crap ton, right? To go from that 130 like a decade ago as the highest team in the entire NFL, where the Redskins, like you said, you're right, you're spot on. They're paying the lowest out of everyone, and then they're overpaying for the guys that they are paying for. That's the Pirates in a nutshell. That's exactly what it's going to be. They're going to find their McCutcheon, and they're going to pay for him. And then everyone else is going to be eating ham sandwiches without the cheese. <laughs> and they're like, we got to save the cheese for our grilly cheese sandwiches that we used to make. Like, we can't do both. Did you see McCutcheon? Like, we have to get him in the All-Star game. Because now it's going to be like, hey, who do the Pirates have? And people go down the list, and they're like, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know. So I, I'm glad that it's not 210 at the top. To me, as a fan, I really don't care. Right? Do do Major League Baseball players need to be able to make outrageous salaries? Maybe. I, I, it's not like the NFL where, you know what, they can get hurt. But you know what? I'm, I'm on gonna... any play. I mean, I guess they could. But injuries are less frequent in Major League Baseball by a big gap. Compared to the but NFL. See, this is the one thing that I don't know how much is guaranteed money for Major League Baseball compared to other sports. But I was trying to rationalize like some of the salaries. And I know like my listening to my dad growing up was always whoever the, the top tier free agents were from the year was like it, uh, every year it became more outrageous of how much they're going to pay the next guy, the next guy, the next guy. And – Major League Baseball has so many more games. Like, why do you have to play seven thousand games? Like, because because that's historically what you've done. Like, 
I, I think they could cut down and, and with the strikes with the strike cut season, cut your games in half, and you're still going to play a bunch of meaningless games for the first half of the year. Matt, it's it's not even that they could pay, or they could play like a quarter of the games. That's why I think if any sports league wants to do something outrageous, and I've said this on the show, and I think we even mapped some of this out, I think they should just expand it and have like a larger tournament, including the minor leagues. And you know, I mean, hell, I joked, I sent you, what was it, the, uh, what's Gonzaga's conference, the WCC in basketball? Did you see their joke of a tournament? Where it's like a 10-team tournament, but instead of typing in Google, hey, 10-team tournament bracket, and seeing that you have the lowest four teams play in like a play-in <laughs> round, they decided, well, uh, let's just keep drawing it. And you have the the nine play the eight and the ten play the seven, but then every other team gets a bye. So Gonzaga only plays two games. They have so many buys that they're in the, the semifinals already. Or court, yeah, quarterfinals. What, what would it be? Semifinals. So they're already there. Quarterfinals, maybe. And all they have to do is win to get in the semis and then win the finals. Their bracket is ridiculous. So if you're at a, a, a 10 seed, you have no chance. You're going to have to win five games. Is that how many was on there? Four games in a row. And then, of course, the top couple teams are going to be fresh. And then hasn't like Gonzaga lost that tournament? So they'd have to win one, two, three, four, five games. Basically, because... I'm going to read this. So if you're the 10 seed, I'm trying to explain this because I know we can't really show it on the audio podcast thing. So the 10 plays a seven. They would then have to play the six, then the three, then the two, and then the winner of the other side. So they don't have, there's not an even balance of games. And I don't see how anyone would care to watch before that quarterfinal round. So who are they doing these games for? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So, like, if they did it like that, they'd have to almost that team would play five days in a row if they got lucky. Unbelievable, horrible. But that might just be another way of just guaranteeing that you get Gonzaga to get in to win their tournament so that they qualify, and then you're ahead of the game. True, but like I said, I think they've lost it in the past because like you're coming in cold. And a team can get hot, not the 10th seed or whatever, but another team that ha- that plays two two warm up games and then gets hot, and then upsets them in that that round. I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I'd have to go back and look at the the bracket. But I wonder if baseball could kind of do something like that. I know that there's such a big gap between pitching, like hey, you're gonna have pitching. But to me, and I've said this before because one of the things, what was that site? Was it NBC or CBS? They were asking, like, hey, if you had the money right now and you could pick any professional sports team, where would you put the team and what league would it be in? And, of course, if the NFL makes the most money, it would be idiotic to put them in any other league, unless you're thinking maybe internationally and you're putting them in, like, Premier League or if they ever get that new super European league off the ground in soccer, that might be worth it just because of the worldwide pool. Uh, But in terms of America, like, you would have to just do the NFL. And then where would you put a team? Like, I would try to build rival rival games back up. I mean, put a team here in Raleigh, play Charlotte. Um, they could still be the Carolina Panthers or whatever they want to call themselves. But try to get more regional and then have fans kind of get into it. With the NFL, you're taking the the Rams, uh, Super Bowl champs away from St. Louis. They're going all the way out west. People don't care. They were complaining about how they didn't even get fans in their own stands. They're the Super Bowl champs. So I know you're going to get the people watching on TV anyway, but try to build it up. And I think there's no sport that could benefit more other than baseball because you already have all these small minor league teams. And who cares? Who wants to watch the Pirates play the Cardinals 40 times a season? How many times do they even play? Like they play each team like a bazillion times. Who cares about that? Like, I would honestly rather have them kind of float around and play. Like, I know with their minor league teams, um, with the ownership, it might get get kind of tricky. But have them play, like, the Curve for a series. Have them play Erie for a series. And try to really get some of the players where you're giving them breaks. 
and you're expanding the game because people aren't watching on TV. They're not coming to the stadium. Like literally no one is coming to watch the Pirates. Did you see their stands last year? And what better way to get fans into it by inflating, call it an SEC move, Matt, in football, where they play all those crappy teams so that every team has like nine or ten wins and they're like, yeah, but look at our records. We all have to be good here. It doesn't matter that four of the wins <laughs> came against Jacksonville State, um, San Jose, um, School of the Blind or whatever, and then they're like, yeah, but we had those four solid wins. I mean, honestly, it's hurting Michigan right now in basketball. They're on the bubble. And people were like, well, they might not hit the win count. They had to cancel like one of their gimme games because of the COVID stuff. And I'm like, all it's taking is like people are looking at that and they're like, yeah, they might have to play in the playing game if they end up winning. They're going to have a winning. <laughs> There's a good chance. And I know they're playing right now, so maybe they're getting their ass kicked because Howard's been out. So who knows? But there's a chance they could have a winning record in the Big Ten, which everyone said at the beginning of the year would have been a lock for the tournament. But they're like, well, the wins don't just fully line up for them because they didn't play Indiana, Fort Worth or whatever team was scheduled in December. And I'm like, does that win even matter? At that point? No, but people see the number and they care. So if the Pirates were ripping through the curve and the Erie, what are they even called now? Um, and all those teams and like, like look at Cleveland, like the Guardians. Who's going to be hyped to watch that after they change their name and stuff? You have to get them beaten up on Akron and all those other local teams. And then they play the Pirates for a couple series. And then they kind of go back. I think that's what baseball should do because then more people might care. Because, like, right now, even where I live now, there's so many minor league teams. Float the Braves through here. Have them play the Durham Bulls. The, the one thing they're afraid of is, like, what if Durham beats them? Like, Durham has won, like, the AAA champ a couple times in a row. Uh, I think they feed into the Rays still. The Rays have been awful. What if the Bulls just end up beating them in the regular season and have a winning record? Just move them up next year. So then they're in a playoff championship. What's the difference if the Braves are beating the crap out of the Rays going to the World Series or if they're beating the crap out of the, the Bulls going to win another World Series? The regular people do not care. They don't. But at least you're giving fans of like different areas a chance to actually get into baseball instead of like, yeah, baseball is boring. It's much better in person. Uh, but like, are you going to go see the, the team with the $7 tickets? Like, nah, they're... They're not that good, so I really don't want to watch them. But like, what if you were there and you're like, what if they actually beat the Yankees? What if the curve beat the Yankees? Could you imagine? <laughs> Everybody in Altoona would be like, I was at that game. I was at that game when they beat the Yankees. Could you imagine? <laughs> and I'm sure they could work out a schedule where they really don't play that many games. I mean, how many bum half squads do they play in spring training anyway? Just get rid of spring training. Spring training is a joke. Have them kind of do like just a longer season, spread it out like you said. You keep the 162 games, and then they have like a longer type playoff thing or whatever. But a lot of those games are kind of just half spring training or half um, half squad. Instead of playing half squad, just play the minor league teams. That's what I that's what I would like to see. I mean, the players might not be into it, but like, could you imagine if you're a guy that has been teetering back and forth between the show? And minors your entire career. Why not just give them a chance to come up at any time? Like they can rally together just like in the movies, like Major League. When the Indians came back together and they're like, yeah, we, we could do this. We could turn it around. Or like every other movie, Angels in the Outfield. Same exact shit. <laughs> Except it would be real life and people might be able to go. And maybe you have a threshold where it's like, hey, you know what? These single A teams, we're going to cut them out. We're going to make it. Whatever the team limit is, if there's 30, how many teams are even in Major League Baseball now? 30? Or, yeah, because it's like a weird number anyway. So just try to figure out a team that has, or the number of teams that has like an even bracket. Like, what's the, and what's the NCAA used to use? 64? Uh, I think baseball could probably do more than that because how many minor league teams are there? It has to be 100, right? <laughs> do 128. That's what football uses for college. Yeah. And, but look, how many times? Do you have a game that actually matters on? Right? If you're adding yeah. more games that matter throughout the season, people are going to care instead of just saying, oh, it's October. I guess the World Series are on. Right? Well, and and we've talked about this before where 
baseball plays 7,000 games, and then their meaningful ones have to go head-to-head with football. And, and it's tough to compete with, with, the fo- with the football crowd. And so I'm looking to see if I can get a number here. But I- I'm saying, like, they could do... Because even the NBA is talking about having like a mid-season championship. Like, who cares about that? No one's going to care unless the teams are actively promoting it as like, hey, we're the champs. Like, if the Celtics win it and they're like, hey, number whatever, 19, 20, whatever it ends up being, 18, like, yeah, in your face, Lakers. Then then, <laughs> then everyone else is going to care about it. But if they're like, hey, yeah, we won this, we're kind of like winning the NIT, like not a big deal. But, like, what if baseball did it where, like, you went from spring training-ish March to April, or March to May, and that the winner, winners from that have a chance to keep going towards the World Series. So if the curve, by some miracle, would be better than the Pirates, the Pirates play in the other part of the year in a lower division. And the curve are up, having a chance to maybe beat the Yankees or whatever. And then you have another round. In like July, where you have those moving up, and it's kind of like regional, so it's kind of more like college football, where it's like, all right, well now we're going to win our region. Now, oh man, now now those top tier and MLB guys are having to eat the cheeseless ham and cheese. <laughs> yeah, could oh, you we got to start winning some games. We, we got to get back to where we're in the top league. A Rod pulls up. He's like, you guys don't have limos. They're like, we don't even have cars. We're riding these scooters they gave us. <laughs> The team bus is back there, man. And then you see like guys like paying their own way. But I, that's basically what Trump did with the USFL when he like paid for Herschel Walker. All it takes is like one owner to be like, you know what? I'm going to make our team a big. Um, so it looks like right now there are 206 teams for minor league baseball, Matt. Why? Why? Cut that down. Do 128. Can you do 128 team bracket? That's what I want to know. Because if that um, if that works out um, for like a basketball, because isn't that double what the NCAA tournament used to be? 64. I'm sure you could. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's perfect. According to uh, what is this freebracket.com? They have it looks perfect, Matt. So I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with it. I'm gonna say count it. 128 teams cut out like however many teams like I know the Pirates like keep them in semi big cities like Altoona's one of the bigger cities in Pennsylvania so the curve you keep them uh, Raleigh has one right outside here uh, what is it on this side is it or I don't even know what they're called are they just called Carolina Mudcats maybe um, yeah but like yes, they are so like keep them keep the Durham Bulls right there you already have a rival. Um, there's a Richmond team, I'm pretty sure. And uh, there's another team up in Virginia off 95 that I always pass. I forget what that one is. Is it Fredericksburg, maybe? Do they have one? So, like, you're having teams that are close enough where you can actually have a real rivalry. Where it's like, hey, maybe Carolina, instead of being in separate divisions and they never play the Bulls, how about they play the Bulls all the goddamn time? (laughs) And then they have a chance to be mixed in with whatever division they're in. Like, if you want to move them up, like, I don't know where all these minor league teams are, but maybe they're in a division with the Braves and all the way down to the Rays. And you have like, hey, the top two or three teams are going to come out of here. Four teams. Let's see who they are. Most of the time, I think the Braves would probably come out of that with who knows. Maybe it's not the Rays anymore if they're not if they're going to keep being shitty. You know, like, I don't think any Cardinals fan. Or Yankees fan or Dodgers fan are going to be like, hey, yeah, I'm really worried about like that minor league team in Long Beach. They're they're really coming for us when they're already paying cool. however top salary. <clears throat> so that that's what I that's what I want to see. If that way, and then I think MLB the players association would be good too too with it because they want that higher top. Just keep it a higher top, and say, hey, we're going to go back to two two ten. But we also have this weird schedule thing where you could end up playing on a bus instead, and they're like, "We will, we will never lose to them." And then that's whenever <laughs> you get great TV, Matt, on a random day in like May, because like I'm thinking they line it up in May because um, the NHL playoffs and NBA playoffs are in June. So okay, May ends. What's in July? Sometimes the Olympics and stuff. Uh, who cares? We'll do one in July then too. 
And then you do one in like September, which then leads to the World Series in October. So they do it three times a year. That would be my push. If like if they really wanted to save the sport, do something different. Otherwise, they're going to be just like boxing and horse racing, which would have, which used to be the biggest sports in America. They're going to be like, you yeah, remember when baseball was good? And they keep like, people watch it. That was boring as shit. That was super boring. Like, how, how do people even go watch that? It's better in person. Oh, yeah, but then the $20 beers came in, and no one even <laughs> wanted to go and sit there. Like, the minor leagues have it fun because they have all the, the cheap beer and all the other activities, too. Let it be fun for people. Just put us out like a, a capacity limit. Like, you have to at least have a stadium that holds 15,000. I don't, I don't know how big Major League Baseball stadiums are. It's not like they're playing in the big house where it's like 100,000 fans anyway. Let's do let's do a quick look here. Uh, but anything else you have on baseball? No. So Tropicana, which is the Rays, which I keep dogging, uh, they have thirty thousand fans. That's their stadium. That's like the smallest. So just set it at twenty. That's like what NHL and NBA do. And I mean the NBA doesn't get that many people. So you know that they're not selling out thirty grand or thirty thousand people all the time. So do twenty, see what happens, and then. Try to be innovative. Try to speed up the game. Um, I don't think there should be like weird things where, hey, you uh, you can't do like substitutions, or they were talking about like, hey, you can only do so many warm up pitches because I think that hurts the pitcher. Um, or maybe do a time. Like if you if you have thirty seconds, if you want to do as many warm up pitches as you can in that thirty seconds, go for it. Same with like they could do a thing where you step in the box, you can't get out. Make it more fun. You can't be calling timeout. Who calls a timeout in baseball? That's what I want to know. Um, the other topics we have, kind of smaller things. Uh, Art Bryles was hired by Grambling State as offensive coordinator. And to me, I'm shocked that he f- he fell so far as to only make offensive coordinator. Like, I'm shocked that one of these smaller schools didn't just take a chance on him. Like, um... Who's your boy that went to Liberty? You freeze? Yeah. Like, I know that there were issues with him, like, covering up sexual stuff, and you freeze was, like, a totally different situation. But both were, sa- were like, saying, like, oh, they'll never get a job again. But, of course, they both did. I'm just surprised that it wasn't just a school taking a shot at him and saying, like, look, we saw what you did at Baylor. Uh, maybe the hesitancy has been that Baylor hasn't really fallen back down. I mean, it seems like, are they actually landing these great coaches? Or are they just already paying players, right? It makes me, <laughs> it makes me wonder how their women's and, and men's basketball teams can just shoot up at like a private school and have that level of success. And then their football team's also having success when the rest of the Big 12 seems to be dying. Right? It seems to be that way. They've been positioning themselves where... I wouldn't be surprised if they were like kings of the Big 12 whenever Oklahoma and Texas leave. I know it's going to be like a weird division where it's like, oh, Baylor's in again. Like, are they good? Like, I, they could be easily be the Clemson of like, hey, all the best people are going to like the SEC or whatever, but Clemson's still able to recruit enough and they play in the weaker ACC that they can run the table and get lucky in the playoffs because they have comparable talent with a good quarterback. And if they don't have a good quarterback, then they might just be an average upper team or whatever. But I think Baylor could do the same thing. Hey, Oklahoma and Texas are gone. Let's just start stepping up our game. It worked in basketball. Step it up and then just win. Win the conference. Get that playoff invite. And kind of roll with it. I think that's why the Big 12 was really pushing for playoff expansion. And... uh the Alliance, the Pac-12, the ACC, and the Big Ten voted against it. Weren't those the three teams? Yeah. Which is dumb. The Big Ten, dumb. They're, dude, they're such dinosaurs that they're kind of like Major League Baseball where they're like, who cares if our, te- if our teams can't win on the national stage because our officiating sucks? Like, I watch Michigan. Bas- <laughs> I say, Matt, I say this all the time. I watch Michigan get ripped off in basketball. And it's like, why are you letting these guys just hack and play these fouls like it's 1980? And then what happens every year? 
the Big Ten gets into the tournament, and they all the teams get eliminated because they're not used to the actual officiating like the other conferences. It happens in every sport. It happens in football. The same shit happens. I'm not saying that that's why Michigan got killed, um, because I think that was just because Georgia was like the best team this year for sure. Uh, but I, I, I think in the football, you let those those teams come out, and um, a lot of those smaller ones that would be bringing up the conference in the, in the interconference play, they get in the Big Ten and they're like, "Hey, we're going to hold, we're going to pull, we're going to do all this crap," and then they play outside of the conference and they're like shell shocked when they're getting killed by these finesse teams putting up 60 points in football. And they're like, what What the hell is going on? You can't pass the ball like that. You can't be doing these RPOs. You got to just tackle the guy in the backfield, hold him, hold their receivers, don't throw a flag. And it's the same for basketball. I watch Michigan and it's like the guys are getting clubbed and they're like, hey, we're not going to call a foul on that. And then the the tournament comes around and they're like, Purdue, Illinois, look at them. They're so hard in the paint. And then they play like some crappy team and they get housed because <laughs> their guys are fouled out in like 10 minutes. And they're like, we don't know why we're fouling out. And that's uncharacteristic. It's like, no, because the Big Ten officiating sucks. And that, that's what I'm going to say. I think the Big Ten is a dinosaur conference for whatever reason. They, I, I, I don't know. People think that every team, every big time team, except for Ohio State for whatever reason, uh, Michigan, Penn State, they all think the conference is against them. Nebraska. But I don't think it's that. I think that they officiate the game in this older style where they're like, every game is going to be close. And it's not the fact that, oh, hey, um, we want this team to lose. I'm like, they just kind of want the game close. And But then you can't do that. They need to just kind of say, hey, we're going to call the NCAA and get their officiate, officials come in. And we're not even going to say anything. The NCAA is going to call it exactly like they're going to call it in the tournament, exactly how it's going to be called in the in the college football playoffs. We want that year round, but they're not going to do it. Just like the playoffs, they're not going to expand. They're hanging on to the Rose Bowl. No one cares about the Rose Bowl. No one cares. No player coming up now as a recruit is going to get a, a pitch from a uh, coach saying, hey, you know what? We could play in the Rose Bowl. They're going to say, is it part of the playoffs this year? What, what are you talking about? What? Why would we want to play in the Rose Bowl? Because, <laughs> like, uh, Matt, for the first time in however many years, Ohio State finally cared about the Rose Bowl this year. Because Michigan was in the playoffs. They're like, yeah, the Rose Bowl is really good. Yeah, Michigan's really missing out. Wouldn't you rather beat Utah? Yeah, I bet Michigan's really, really upset that they didn't, <laughs> they didn't beat Utah in the Rose Bowl. It's like, no, we don't care about that. Uh, unless your team is in it because they already lost and they're out of the playoffs. No one cares about other bowl games. So that that's my long-winded rant where um, Art Bryles, you can't just tell me that all these other scandals at all these other schools get brushed under the rugs, and yet I don't know what he did. I mean, if he's connected enough, then he wouldn't be hired at all, right? But, like, why hire him as an, off- as a, as an offensive coordinator? That's my thing. Well, right. If he's cleared enough for that, why isn't he your head coach? Because your head coach is not better than him. And I, I try not to show any bias towards his football X and O because I Baylor was predominantly garbage until he got there, and he built them into a, a power and, and recruited RG three and, and had a high level of success. And when you look at the number of players who've come out of there and some of the allegations that have come out after the fact that there's so much stuff that sealed it because Baylor's a private university, you're never going to really know the true story of what all happened. But to me, the bottom line in all of it is if there really was any, any fire to the smoke, we wouldn't be talking about him being hired as an offensive coordinator. We'd be talking about him being incarcerated and being in jail. Like there was, there, there wasn't enough charges that, they weren't gonna. They weren't gonna like press legal issues with it. Matt, the same thing happened with Brian Kelly at Notre Dame. He told a kid to get up on that scaffolding that wasn't safe in that windstorm because he needed practice footage. The kid died, and then they're kind of like, "Oh, that's really sad. No big deal. Keep coaching, BK. We need to get back. We need to get to the playoffs, baby." So yeah, private school stuff. 
Um, could he have been at fault? Who knows? I don't know. Like for either of the scenarios, we'll never know the truth. I mean, look at LSU. They're public and they're still fighting all their allegations. So we don't know. So I, I don't know. But like I said, like you, you said, he, he should be in jail then. But if you're going to go out on a limb and hire him, why not just make him head coach? Right? I mean, maybe you're saying, like, hey, we're going to give him a chance as this. It kind of goes back to the Chiefs with the enemy. It's like Andy Reid thought that he wasn't coming back. At least that's what he said today or yesterday. So, okay, you thought he was going to be getting a head coaching job somewhere. He wasn't even mentioned. Right? Right. <laughs> so, like, the Vikings are bringing in Harbaugh, who's going around saying that they're going to hire him, and he's telling everyone goodbye. <laughs> it's like, they didn't even interview, <laughs> didn't even interview the enemy. It's like, okay, well, that's weird. Our Urban Meyer had all the, the entire scandals. So if you're worried about him being a scandal-filled coach or whatever, you just had Urban Meyer. Take a shot at him. See what happens. How can it be worse? So... I don't know. But, but I think because because with the way that the brow scandal came out, there was there were a lot of people that were that were so fast to isolate him and anything that comes up, it just becomes well, he was in that scandal and they shut it down. So I mean, to me it makes sense that at Grambling State he can he can go there as the offensive coordinator. Oh Matt. He can spend a couple years. He's with you he's with Hugh Jackson so that he can say we're not focused on. Well, it's not going to matter now because we're going to sound like idiots. He just he resigned. <laughs> so Art Bryles steps down, probably because of the heat. I mean, we I put this on the list last week, but I was looking to see where it came. Um, so it was after Doug Williams spoke out against him. I didn't even know he went there. He's Super Bowl MVP. Yeah. Um, the first black quarterback in the to win the Super Bowl, right? Yep. So he um, he came out and said that he could no longer support the alma mater, and of course they just fired him. Um, which I mean, he stepped down or resigned, or whatever. I don't want to get in trouble, but I mean, of course, if your biggest guy is coming out and saying they're not going to support him, they uh, which is kind of weird because they didn't even. So Grambling didn't even announce him as a as a head coach. So it's really weird how they went. So Hugh Jackson's the coach, right? And he yeah. has his own thing going on. Yes. With his um he has a charity that all that all his money kind of pays one employee or something. So I don't know all the details, but you can look that up yourself. But it just seems really weird this situation. Where, like I said, if you're vetting the guy, which obviously if he just resigned, they they didn't get clearance from the school, which seems kind of weird, right? Because I think every other school, you're going to have to run that hire by the board of trustees (laughs) because they're going to have, they're going to have their own meetings. You're not going to hire the guy and announce it on ESPN everywhere and then be like, oh yeah, you know what? Um... The the athletic had a source say that Doug Williams has the influence to change things here. And but so, you know, like, the, but I'm going to say like with Brown style of offense, and it kind of circles back to some of the NFL stuff. You know, we've we've railed for years about how the NFL will will take the same offensive coordinators, they'll take the same former head coaches, and they'll recycle them around, and it's like you don't get anything different. So, like, I I think what makes the NFL or and even college football uh, as special as what it is, is because you get these different styles of offense that, that you get, you get to see weekly. And it's like to be able to have a variety of, of, of offenses and defenses and different schemes like that. It shows off the highlights of the different teams in unique ways that, that it makes it more special, you know, as opposed to just a carbon copy where if everyone follows, what Alabama's running. Well, you're not recruiting Alabama players, so you're not going to win. Yeah, so you have to kind of scheme for that. And so if, you, if recruiting's not going to be there, you have to be a coach that can scheme around it. And that's where, like, this entire thing, he was been coaching at high school fine, right? 
Is not Reese Ben? I th- I thought he did go back to high school, and I I I just I don't know, like. Yeah, like for 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 as bad as is how that was, it I, I think it would almost be the equivalent of like at this point Joe Paterno just coming back and just be like, yeah, I'm coaching now. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know if Paterno actually like covered the stuff up. They really don't know, and they'll never know. And like you said, with the stuff being locked at at Baylor, we'll never know either. So I don't even know uh, why he's not getting a second chance. I mean, he's been close, and it seems like the job lynch mob is just out to get him. Yeah. And so I don't know how much of that is really on him. It's going to be hard to defend yourself if you're not able to talk about it. I'm just surprised that there's not some school out there that says, like, you know what? We're going to clear him. And maybe they – because I was surprised that Liberty didn't try to hire him first and, like, insulate him and, and give him all that PR they have. But like now, well, he, I don't think that it, I don't think that he would have been hired as long as Hugh Freeze was still there because Hugh Freeze is still going to call the offense. So like it doesn't yeah. do good to to have two people doing the same thing. So I don't know. It's weird. I know. I wish I could have updated the thing. Now I didn't see that he was actually fired, although or resigned. I don't really have grambling alerts set up. Uh, the other big lawsuits coming out. Which this one's funny to me. So Conference USA is kind of holding on. I, I think we mentioned this before. But the big thing that came out of this is that the Sun Belt announced their schedule. So Sun Belt put out their teams. They're taking Marshall and a couple other ones from Conference USA. And they're having them join early. So Conference USA is saying, like, no, they're still supposed to play with us this year. We're going to go ahead and also put out a schedule that has them included. So now you have, like, Marshall in there scheduled twice. What are they going to do? And (laughs) is the lawsuit even going to do anything, right? Like, it's going to take forever to get any type of action from the lawsuit, so, like, from the Comfort USA, are they just going to schedule it and then try to get them to pay for the damages in the thing? So, it's going to be three teams. Marshall, Old Dominion, and Southern Miss. I thought there was a fourth team. But they're going to schedule... They're going to transition this year for basketball, or for football, at least. I thought it was basketball, too. But maybe I'm wrong. They are... Um, they're going to just play in the Sun Belt. Meanwhile, Conference USA, I don't know. So Old Dominion, they have an injunction going against Conference USA. They're trying to move. They're not. Oh, yeah, they are one of the three teams. So they were granted their injunction. So they want to get out of there without arbitration. I don't know what that's going to mean for them. But. They think that they they think it's against the law for Conference USA to try to hold them in. Conference USA would then be left with what? It's like a crazy thing that they're even going to do this. Uh, I guess they would have eleven teams, so it really doesn't even matter, right? Just just win your games, just win all of them. It doesn't matter who you have in your conference. Well, it's just big for you. Who- it's big for you because um, Liberty's going to be going to Conference USA. So they're trying to rebuild. Meanwhile, other teams are just trying to leave. But well, when I initially looked at some of that, I was like, what, what are you doing? Like, because they're, they've been playing that independent schedule for, for a while now. I'm like, it's, it's not helping you. Joining le- Conference USA. <laughs> Joining Conference USA or... You know, are are you holding out or trying to use that as like a ploy to to get into a bigger conference? At that point, I don't know why they just didn't join the Sun Belt with like App State and a couple other teams. Like if Marshall's joining, maybe they didn't get that invite. But like, I'm trying to look at this. 
so many teams read on this like listing where they went. So a lot of the coverage USA teams did go to the Big 12, ACC, that's like Louisville and teams like that, but Houston now. So they're all leaving or have left already for the American and then the Big 12. So now it's like, what are you going to do with the rest of the teams that are here? Like a team like Charlotte, they have to be pissed. Because like App State kind of just is like, hey, we're just going to keep moving up and then take teams from your conference (laughs) and make life hell for you. And then meanwhile, we also are buddying up with Coastal Carolina and they're winning natties and baseball and stuff. It's like, what are you doing Like for the rest of the conferences around that same area? You're getting nothing out of it. You're getting nothing out of being in here. But to me, it's just crazy. I don't understand what they're going to do. I mean, your boy Willie Taggart's still there at FAU. That's your boy. Why, Willie Taggart? <laughs> he has no ties to Michigan, Matt. He's a Florida State guy through and through. Do something, baby. He's with he's with, he's with all the Harbaugh's. <laughs> he, he he learned from all the Harbaugh's. <laughs> Well, was he interviewing with the Vikings, telling people goodbye at Florida State? No, I don't remember him doing that. So he, <laughs> he must not have learned that well. <laughs> um, yeah, this is going to be. Uh, to be honest, I I honestly think the NCAA should kind of just push to like get the conference numbers down. Because I honestly, like I said, they want them to expand the playoffs, but I think the pow- the problem is. You have like what's considered a power five, and then you have five other conferences that if you included everybody, you're going to have, what, five extra spots that people might not care about? But what if the other conferences combined into three mega conferences, Matt, where you have an Eastern Coast Conference, a Middle United States Conference, Midwest type conference with Texas and all them. Because there's like how many other smaller schools there? Utah, UTAP. I'm even looking at this UAB. Um, they're more in Alabama, so they're closer to the east, probably. But like Western Kentucky, uh, and then have a Western co- conference, which is kind of already there with the Boise and stuff and the BYU. And why not go to the NCA with that proposal and say, look, just for football, I don't care about the other sports because honestly, I don't. Do you? I mean, honestly, I'm thinking of this in terms of let's get a fair playoff. But if if they're going to do like a weird 12-team playoff, I don't understand why these other conferences don't just say, we're going to combine and have our champion play the other champion. And then kind of just take it from there. And that's going to be our playoff rep. Because otherwise, guess what? You're not getting in the playoffs. You are not getting in at all. And I'm going to jinx this, Matt, because Michigan is kicking the shit out of Sparty right now. They're up 20. (laughs) So um, I had said that they might, they're on the bubble. But this, I think, locks them in if they win one more game as a winning record in the Big Ten. So they should hopefully get into the, but the Big Ten officiating sucks so bad, Matt, that you know how annoying it is uh, watching poor officiating. And you're like, what are you doing? Like, why are you trying to keep our best teams out? (laughs) Um, yeah, they'd be what ten and ten. Let me. I'm trying to see. Oh no, they do have the unbalanced. So they would at least be 500 if they win this one and one more. That'd be over. Which let's say they win one in the Big Ten tournament. I think that counts. So I would think they're going to be in. Um, I'm looking at the standings just to kind of see which conferences. So you have the AAC, which it's going to be weird now because a lot of these teams are leaving to join bigger conferences. So you have them. Let's see. The Big 12, I would still think, is going to stay as like that upper upper, uh, power five or whatever. But then you have Conference USA, the MAC, the Mountain West, and then the the Sun Belt. So is there only five? I don't know how you... I mean, the Mountain West kind of just... I would say keep the Mountain West there and then kind of take some of the teams from the other conferences. Like, there has to be some overload here where you're crossing over, but they could realistically combine the Sun Belt with Conference USA. I know that some of those teams are kind of getting out of there and then combine the rest of the AAC with the Mac. 
But then yeah. just even it out by having some of the other teams. Because like the Independence, Matt, New Mexico State, join the, join the Mountain West. What are you doing? Um, so <laughs> get them out of there. Like UMass and UConn, join one of those other conferences. And then Liberty's already doing it. So then you would just kind of be left with Army. Put Army in one of these. And then what was the one that has you know, the Air Force is already in the Mountain West? I was just trying to see which ones they could really get out of here. But maybe they just take the Texas teams. Texas State Bobcats. I don't even know how many there are. Maybe like Louisiana, Monroe, and Arkansas. Try to keep some of them more to the West. I think that would I think that would be a pitch that I would I would go in for. What do you think? I think I think that would be all right. Because then you're saying, hey, every conference champ is in the playoffs. There's eight of them. If you want to do a 12-team playoff, because with me, my main thing is getting the buys right now. If you don't have conference champs in and you're giving teams a buy, that's, that's not fair and that's kind of bullshit because they don't play balanced schedules. So the, the smartest thing the Big Ten has ever said is that they might go to an eight-game schedule. And that's something I've been preaching on this show for like years now. That's the smartest thing they could do because it gives them one more win. It's like Spinal Tap, Matt. This one's one louder. This one's one better. <laughs> one, one more win, one better. And maybe you lose that game, but for the most part, it's going to inflate the Big Ten records that much more. Because out of, what, 14 teams or whatever they have, the, most of them are going to win that extra game. And instead of having a bunch of teams that are like six wins, now they're all at seven wins. It just looks that much better. Like, you can't argue around it. And, and they're like, well, but don't, don't forget that the SEC, they have that rivalry game. That's their ninth game right now. It's not like they're not going to have rivalry games anymore in the Big Ten. Like Michigan still plays the ninth game and Notre Dame whenever Notre Dame wants to. Or they'll play, um, would, uh, Ohio State played Oregon this year. Why are they doing that? Like, are you guys smoking crack? Why are you playing that game? If you don't play that game, I would think the playoffs this year might have been Michigan, Ohio State, Georgia, and Alabama, right? That's what yeah. kept them out. I know Michigan kind of beat them by 20 points or whatever, but, but I think you, they probably would have been in. But, but you know, I, I say this. I, I applaud Ohio State's effort for scheduling that game because, like, did it keep you out? Yeah, but at the same time, what do you truly get out of a Delaware State? Because you you play an FCS score or some someone that doesn't matter, and then you get you back your way into the playoffs and you get smoked by forty by Alabama. Nah, nah Matt, you're missing the big thing. They play that team as a warm up game, rest game, walk through game before the Michigan game. All the SEC teams do it instead of Michigan traveling to Iowa a few years ago before that game and getting Wilton Spade's collarbone broke, or whatever he did. Remember he hurt his shoulder in that game? They're sitting at home playing Eastern Michigan, Matt, tidying up. Or someone even worse. Where they're like, you know what? Now now we're resting up. And then guess what? They don't have that extra loss. They lose to Ohio State in overtime. They're in the playoffs. The Iowa loss definitely screwed them. And I don't understand why the Big Ten didn't see that and say, what the hell are we doing? Why are they traveling to Iowa before they play Ohio State? In the shoe. Like, who made the schedule? And I, they know that it's wrong because recently they've been trying to give Ohio State and Michigan, like Maryland and Indiana the week before, teams that they've beaten since like 1980s for the most part. So it's like, oh, but we're kind of doing it. And but the rest of the conference isn't doing that. Like, Michigan State and Penn State are still playing like tough, tougher games down the road. I think they end up, didn't Ohio State have to play Penn State this year before Michigan? So it's like, Sometimes you're getting screwed. Sometimes it works out where you play Maryland. And then Ohio State almost lost to them anyway. Remember that one year yeah. right before they, they toasted Michigan? And you know why they almost lost to them? Because they were preparing for Michigan anyway. They're like, we're going to kill Maryland. It doesn't matter. So that's my solution for this. You're never going to have unbalanced or you're never going to have balanced things. The conferences are already getting picked apart. These lesser ones. There are five of them. Unless I'm counting wrong, plus the independents or whatever. Consolidate. You, you lower five or whatever you're calling yourself because, I mean, the power five branding is re- definitely hurting them. So why don't they just say, hey, we're going to take like the mid-major approach in basketball. We're going to put our best team in, but we want that automatic bid and we want you guys to go to auto bids. 
because we're not going to we know that you're not going to give us all 10 teams in an auto bid because if you go to 12 teams and then you're only getting two at large at least with eight and then 12 you're getting four at large those for that first round would be the three lower conferences playing in and then whatever the last team in kind of like college basketball where you know how they have like the, the last four in like that i said michigan was on that list now it will be the last team in playing in that first round matchup or the last two win, you can guess they would play each other, right? So like you're yeah. looking at, oh, last year it might have been, would Ohio State get in? Would it be Oklahoma State right there, you know, because they're, they're right there. I, don't, I can't remember which teams were. It would be a little bit different because some of them would have already been in automatically, but that's my thing. I'm watching this. Uh, the last thing I also had on here was USFL. They're getting sued. Fox bought their name or registered it in 2011 haven't used it they've been talking about coming back for years so now they're finally some of the original usfl owners which i thought they gave it up in the 30 for 30 documentary i should have yeah. watched it before this show but i didn't even re, re uh look up our prowls so who the hell am i what am i talking about so i'm definitely not doing that um but that's my thing what are your thoughts on that well, that was that was the surprise thing. It was like, it's not like any they they announced it well in advance that they were going to be coming back this spring, and it definitely feels like the more the traction that they have and that this can be a legitimate thing, and with some of the stuff that they have in place, like they're going to be able to play like by by housing all of the teams in a bubble type that pod in Birmingham they're going to be able to get through their season it's like there's a chance they're going to make money off of this we need to try to capitalize and now they're they're suing after the fact it's like it's too late there's no way they're going to they're going to make that happen and that's why the pod thing to me is kind of crazy like why are you having these team names like Pittsburgh and Michigan and all the stuff if you're in a pod it makes zero sense. I like. I think that's another outdated thing for sports being tied to a location, and I know they're doing that to kind of like bring them in. But what if they just added like a you know how they in college basketball there's like the raging Cajuns or whatever? Um, why not just do that for all your teams? Just give them like a prefix name that's like something crazy. <laughs> like instead of like the wild cats, they'd be something like more fierce. Um, I don't even know off the top of my head. I don't want to sound like an idiot, but you know what I'm talking about. Give them, instead of a location, just have eight teams to try to make them badass and then give them like cool logos and stuff. Almost like um, just like some of the monsters and stuff from like other shows and stuff that are popular uh, and try to make them like cool like that. Like have a mascot that people can kind of like stand out, make it unique. That's what I want to see. You don't need to be more generic. Like the NFL and the Major League Baseball approach with like the Guardians and what were they, the Admirals now? I can't even remember. It's so generic. Is that who it was? That was one of them. Yeah. You don't want to be that. You don't want to be that. Um, try to make it more national because then that way, if it does take off, maybe next year you have the eight teams play in like Dublin or somewhere or in London. The NFL has been trying to do it. Could you imagine if the USFL went and played their entire season in London? And it like sold out and went crazy. The NFL would shit their pants, Matt. <laughs> so like you could make it worldwide by having in like crazy things. And I've been saying that too. Like maybe give your teams like a sister city to try to expand and get fans there, but they're not going to care for these other cities that they've never been in. Like I watch like European soccer and stuff. I don't care about the city type stuff. Some of the country's names, like, hey, yeah, I know people from there or, or whatever. That's better to me than, like, some city I've never been in or, and barely heard of. Like, I'm not going to cheer for their team, you know. But if you make all the teams national and you're like, yeah, I'll cheer for that couple teams from Ireland or whatever, uh, maybe they'll be good. To me, like, for, if you're going for a wor- worldwide approach, you got to tie it to the country. But that's my last thought. Um, you have anything else for the final bell? No. All right, um, that was crazy, kind of really uh, off-topic type stuff, but it is the off-season. We have been tested some other stuff that might be coming out, but we'll keep you in the loop as I get more information on that. But definitely tell your friends, podcast is still going on in the off-season. We're going to hear a little bit more in the NFL in the upcoming weeks, and we'll be keeping an eye on the Major League Baseball stuff. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. 